So we are now recording. Okie dokie. Yeah, I, I made sure I posted a little note that said, uh, uh, <laughs> push record. <laughs> yes. Okie dokie. Well, get all these. One last check here. Junk mail. Okay. Um, Uh, okay, so let's see. I've got my uh, I got all my paints ready to go, uh, and I am thinking uh, that I kind of want to start with some of the lighter things, um, particular, in particular um, these these rock this rock outcropping, uh, and then this little bit of cliff face here. Um, and, uh, let's see, I need to, I need to invest in some new sponges. I used to have a bunch of sponges, um, that I used to use to clean my palate and, uh, yeah, I need to invest in a few, few new ones. They're, they're all so black now that they're not even cleanable. Um, let me just kind of clean off part of my palette here. I... Get that ready to go. I had, a, I had a bit of a mess going on over here. So, okay. So what I'm thinking is we want to, see, even though uh, if we look at the photo, which we're not, but if we looked at the photo, um, even though these are kind of reds and dark purples and everything, we want to start out fairly light. Um, so I'm going to start off with um, I'm going to start off with some some uh, permanent yellow deep. Uh, so that kind of medium, uh, let's see here, this medium dark uh, yellow that's right there. But it's not an ochre, right? No. Um, you could use yellow ochre or you could even use like quinacridone gold if you have that and don't have uh, permanent yellow deep. Um, the, my only complaint with yellow ochre is it's just not as clean looking as yeah. say this orange, but it, it, it will work. Uh, that was one of the reasons I switched to, I'll show you quinacridone gold, which is very similar to yellow ochre. See, oh, you can't see that. Let me, uh, let me come over here with my camera. Um, it's very similar to yellow ochre, but it, it's, it's just a little bit brighter. Um, so that's that's quinacridone gold. It doesn't look anything like yellow ochre in the palette, but when you when you add water to it, it, it does look a, a bit like um, quinac or uh, like yellow ochre. So you could you could use yellow ochre if, if that was what you had, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, let me get this thing back. There we go. Um, So uh, uh, I, I, and I could use a little yellow ochre and I may here in a little bit, uh, not yellow ochre, quinacridone gold, uh, but I'm gonna start off with the, with the uh, permanent yellow, yellow deep, which is this, this orange right here. 
Um, and I may switch to some of this, this quinacridone gold as well. Uh, but really all I'm gonna do, and I may even add a little of my permanent yellow orange in there. Um, I don't wanna get too dark yet. I just wanna use some real light uh, oranges and yellows. Uh, I could even use Indian yellow. If you have an Indian yellow, that's very similar. It's kind of in between the two. It, it looks very similar to permanent yellow deep. Um, I mean, sorry, permanent yellow orange. Um, oh, you can't see that. Here we go. So this is, this is Indian yellow right here where my brush is. Uh, and that's the permanent yellow orange. Uh, and they do look very similar. Mm -hmm. A little hard to see because there's a shadow over my, my palette right here. But uh, um, but I'm going to go ahead and use start with quinacridone yellow uh, deep. Uh, and I'm just I want to really water down very very watery wash. So I I, I have a lot of water uh, in my brush. Uh, and I'm just going to come in and and kind of do a nice little wash. Uh, along these these rock shapes, uh, maybe keeping a fair amount of that that uh, that yellow or excuse me, yeah, permanent yellow deep uh, kind of towards the top, uh, and then I'll I'm going to switch it up and go for a little permanent yellow orange. Uh, again, very watery. Mostly water in this this wash, um, just for the heck of it. I'm going to switch over to a little quinacridone gold, which yellow ochre would be a good uh, a good version. You can see it's just a little little more um, neutral than the yellow, which is fine. Uh, maybe I'll add a little of that right there. Uh, and I can even pull in a little opera, uh, even though it seems like it's not a, 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 a light, you know, color uh, in an, in appearance. It is actually very, very light. So I'm going to pull a little of that opera over over here into. Uh, into this area here. Oops. I don't need to worry about that because there's so much water in that that it shouldn't matter. Let's see. Let's let's put a little bit over in here as well, just to give it gives it that kind of peachy glow. Here's a little. I'll use a little Indian yellow. You can see it's kind of very similar to that permanent yellow orange. Uh, I need to make sure that I don't that I get this all the way down. Uh, let's see. I don't want any weird hard lines. So let's come in. I, I switched a little Indian yellow over here just to brighten this up just a bit from just the quinacridone gold. Um, and again, I'm just going to kind of, I'm not going to worry about overlapping this line uh, because later we'll come in with some darker darks onto that. So. Just switching back and forth between um, between colors, so I'm going to go back to this kind of the, the permanent yellow deep. Um, just making sure I have good coverage on this wash. I think over here I'm going to actually go back to a little quinacridone gold down in here, just so it's a little different. And you can already tell I kind of went outside of where I wanted that color, but that's all right. And I think back to a little opera in here just to kind of finish off this, this wash here. Pick up a little of that excess bead that's down here. 
drop a little opera in up here. My opera is starting to kind of um, granulate a little bit, which doesn't bother me that much. It, it is sometimes a little annoying, um, but uh, sometimes you get cool effects because it's granulated. Other times it kind of gets in the way. But, and I, I don't know why it does, it's doing that. Um, it is Holbein, a Holbein color, so it shouldn't, but uh, every now and then I get even those start to granulate a little bit. So let me just pick up some of that excess. Uh, and then I'm gonna continue on over here as well. Um, so I'm gonna come in with a little of that permanent yellow deep, kind of in here. Uh, and I can overlap where that, that color is going to go. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of that up in, in this area anyway. So I've got a little opera. Maybe a little Indian yellow. Just kind of work my way. Uh, let's see, that's actually all kind of rock there. It's not... Yeah, it's a tree or something. I don't remember. But I'm just going to pull that on over to there. Uh, and even I can even come down with a little of that color down into this area here as well. Um, just because that, that dirt all through there is red. Uh, let's see. I'm going to switch back to the Quinac or, uh, permanent yellow orange over in here. I can even bring this on down into there. I will be adding, you know, some trees and little bits and bobbles and stuff in there, but. Uh, So, and then um, before this form, I don't want a real hard line up here. So I'm gonna come in with just a clean brush and kind of wipe that off. So it, it softens that edge. Uh, same with over here. I'm just gonna bring in my just clean brush and soften that edge just like that. So it just pulls it up and softens it. And uh, same with over here. This kind of needs to be softened a little bit. I've got a pretty hard line forming right there that I don't really want right there. So I can just pull some of that down in there. Maybe add a little rougher just for some of that. up some of this excess. So it's a little, let's see, a little hard. There's a bit of a glare from this lamp. Let's see here. I don't know. If I just, but you can kind of see, I mean, I've, I've gone through and softened this whole thing here. There, there's a little bit of color on there, uh, as you can see, but not a whole lot. Soften that. There's, there's still going to be a bit of a line, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. I just didn't want a super hard one. Later on, it might might poke through. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, while this is this is kind of dry, I'm going to kind of clean up this spot where it came out of. Uh, came out of where I wanted to. I, I crossed that line there, which is not that big a deal, but. 
I just want to kind of pick that up just a bit while that was kind of almost dry, but not quite dry. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and dry this now with a hair dryer. Still a little damp, but that's all right. And basically what we're gonna be doing is building up, um, you know, this is our lightest light now that we have here. Um, so all the light areas, you know, if we look at our, look at this sketch, all the things that are white on here are actually going to be this, this light. Um, so now we need to build up those darks, but we want to do it gradually because there's a whole slew of kind of mid-tones, all sorts of stuff uh, in here. So we don't want to, uh, let's see, there's another little spot that I don't want really in the sky. Uh, okay, so you know what, that's, I'm just going to hit that with a dryer a little bit more. Yeah, that's a little better. Um, okay. So I think I'm going to switch to a round brush. I'm going to switch to my number 10 round uh, for now. Uh, just because some of these shapes are a little smaller. Uh, and I want to make sure that, uh, that I kind of follow my plan a little bit. Um, so I want to move in incremental uh, light to dark kind of. Um, steps. So I now need to, I kind of need to look at my palette, see what I've got that maybe uh, fits into this. Uh, and I can, even though uh, I use this uh, permanent yellow orange uh, before, I can actually use more of it, less water, more paint, or at least more pigment within the puddle. Um, I, I can also use uh, Scarlet Lake. I could come in with a little Scarlet Lake. Uh, it looks very red, but it actually softens down to um, a, a nice kind of pink. Uh, same with Pyro Orange. I could use a little of that, although that has a tendency to stain. But we know we also know that that will will um, soften down into a nice peach color. Um, so as long as I'm aware of what I that, that that color stains a little bit, I can, I can, I can go ahead and use some of it too. Um, so I'm actually going to start with a little of that. Uh, I have a fair amount of water in this. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's um, pretty potent, but it's, it's actually a fair amount of water. And I'm just going to come in and kind of 
Uh, let's see. Where is that dark? Oops. Uh, I'm going to come in. I, I need to re-angle this. Uh, so there's not a lot of it over here, but I'm, I'm going to come in with just this little bit of a dark uh, right on the edge there. Maybe so that was quinacridone violet. I'll switch into some some uh, scarlet lake. Maybe even back to some of that orange, the permanent orange. Uh, and I don't need to worry too much about this being right on that line. You know, I don't need it to be that thin uh, on that line because I want some of this. This will actually end up being a very light mid-tone uh, when we're done. So I'm just going to add just a bit of that uh, and then sort of pick up some of the edges so it softens them. A bit, uh, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue this across where where these darks are. Um, so I know, let's see, I'm gonna come in with a little scarlet lake right here. I know there's a pretty good dark right in here. Uh, maybe we'll switch back to some permanent yellow orange. And if I go over the edge just a wee bit. That'll pull that mid-tone into there. This this is all gonna be fairly dark later. Let's see. Let's go into some uh, pyro orange, maybe down in here. And then I'm going to use a little permanent yellow orange up in this spot up here, uh, and then pull this down uh, into some of this other little dark area. And again, I want to come back in with just a clean brush with a little, you know, kind of damp, but not super, super wet um, and soften this one side. I kind of want this side to be a little sharper um, and have that light. I want to come in and kind of pick up some of this so I don't lose that light right there uh, quite yet. Because I, I like that that fairly fairly bright uh, light color that's right there, uh, and I'm just going to continue across. So I'm going to let's see, I want it to be fairly light up in there. So I'm going to pick up some of that excess, uh, and then I'm going to come back over here, uh, maybe with a little little scarlet lake over here as well. Uh, I'm going to have a, a fairly sharp. Uh, edge. Let me grab a little, little bit more. There we go. Uh, on the one side, uh, I've got a little bit of a light area uh, here, so I want to make sure that I kind of save that. Uh, let's switch over to a little permanent yellow orange, uh, and then I got a little bit too much, so I kind of just clean my brush out. Uh, and I'm just using the water and the paint that's on my paper right now uh, to kind of move that around. Let's add a little more of that orange into that uh, area. Let's see, this actually comes down fairly dark into this area. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little orange down in here. Keep that, that edge kind of soft. So I want to come back in with the damp brush. Fairly clean damp brush. I forgot to clean it out. I just 
wiped it off basically uh, and soften this this edge right here. I want this edge to be sharp, but I want this edge to be fairly soft. And let's see. And then there's a little Scarlet Lake down into here. And a couple of spots just That looks like a lot of just weird lines, but I'm going to come back in now that I've put those those lines in, and I'm going to soften them up with a little water. Um, it was a little drier than I should have should have let it be, but that's okay. Keep that fairly sharp right there. Um, there's actually a nice little kind of crack in there. And then there's a wee bit of kind of red back up in here as well. And at this point, I mean, even though that's not quite the way that looks in real life, that's okay. Nobody's ever going to know. Um, you know, I kind of changed that shape just because I felt like it needed to be different than just a straight line coming down. Let me kind of soften this with my brush over here. I want a really nice soft edge on this side. And if I end up with some hard edges where I don't really want them, that's okay because I can I can add some more paint later and soften them. Uh, it'll just be a little bit darker than I planned. But that's okay. And right now it should be looking kind of like a jumbled mess of oranges. Um, so, so if yours is looking kind of loose and jumbledy, that's okay. That's that's the way it's supposed to look. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to come in with a little quinacridone uh, orange. This whole kind of section uh, is in shadow. Um, so I'm just going to kind of that was a little quinacridone orange. Now I'm going to use a little Scarlet Lake. Uh, I don't want this super dark, but I want to kind of cover this whole this whole area um, in in some slightly darker oranges and stuff because uh, eventually it's going to be quite a bit darker. But I want these lighter colors to kind of show through. I want them peeking through, um, just like you know, we've done on other things. So now a little uh, permanent yellow orange uh, on down into here. Let's go in a little. I'm going to use a little bit more opera in there as well. Just to give just a, a hint of that kind of pink showing through. I'm going to pull that on, even though this is kind of where I'm going to end up having a fairly sharp line later. I want some of that, that opera coming through over here. So I'm just going to pull it on over. I'm going to add a little more water to some of this because I've got some of these colors that are kind of pooling up into their just into themselves and they're not really mixing because I didn't have enough water in my brush. So I'm now going to just add a little bit more water uh, and then come over here and 
really suck in this edge up. Right now. So I kind of want to do the same uh, up in here. This is going to be in shadow, this little bit here. Uh, but then down here, this is kind of in light uh, and just has a few little streaks and dark running through it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is come in just up in here with some of this Scarlet Lake and pull that on up into this kind of area. Uh, not enough water, so I just got my brush wet, cleaned it, and got it wet. Uh, and then I'm just going to soften that edge. And then this is going to come kind of down into there. And this is going to come over. Let's see, that's kind of dark. And then we've got some kind of streaky, straight, almost straight lines, but not quite uh, down in there. And this kind of starts to turn back over there. Let's soften that. And I could use a even use a little quinacridone gold if I wanted to. Uh, that's also, can, you know, you can add that to get a little bit darker in spots uh, as well. So I'm going to add just a hint of that quinacridone gold down in there. So that orange, it just, I think the two together have a tendency to just really pop. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to continue working my way around these sort of fingers of rock. So that's a little uh, permanent yellow orange. I can come in with a little quinacridone, I mean, sorry, pyro orange uh, as well, just to switch it up a little bit. There's a bit of kind of another, you know, a little bit darker curve on this wall, rock. So I'm going to just add, I'm just going to pull some of that over here um, and then really soften this cat hair on there. Really soften this edge quite a bit. I don't know if you all can see that real well. Oops, come on. Uh, but I've really softened that edge right there. Uh, this could also be a little softer. I'll let that kind of get a little harder than maybe, eh, it doesn't matter. It'll, it'll work out. But yeah, I want this to really be, or to be fairly soft right there. Uh, and then I want this line uh, to be kind of, it's going to end up being kind of darker. Uh, it's coming in with a little more Scarlet Lake right in there. But then it's going to soften this direction as well. So I'm just going to pull that out this direction. So I've now softened it into, you know, I have a, a kind of a uh, area that's, that's a little darker in the middle, but then it, as it goes out, it sort of softens out to either side. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. Let's get this back up here. So I don't make you guys see. Oops. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so back to some of that when at, uh, permanent yellow orange. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of that up in here. Uh, I could go over that edge, even though eventually that's going to be uh, a fairly sharp edge. I can, at this point, I can be fairly, fairly soft. Uh, there's a little uh, pyro orange coming in down there. That's a lot of pyro orange. So I'm going to clean my brush out and really so we kind of want that coming in like so. I'm going to leave that little bit there kind of sharp. Uh, and there's a, there's actually a dark bit that kind of comes down in here. That has a fairly sharp line there, but then over here, Oh, softens out. What does that do? That comes all the way down here. And then this comes all the way down to right about in that neck of the woods. And let's go back to this orange. This is permanent yellow orange again. Uh, that's pyro orange. This kind of darker orange here. And before it dries too much, I want to kind of soften some of that. Just a skosh. Maybe a little on this side. The cool thing about, you know, painting something like this is, you know, you could spend the, re you know, forever trying to work out every single exact crack um what you know where everything is but you know that that really doesn't tell a any better of a story than what i'm doing here um so you can really i need to stop in this line over here um you can really just be fairly loose with this. I mean, right now this doesn't look like much of anything, uh, but this is again, you know, only two two glazes in. I want to soften. See if I can soften some of this over here. I may or may not be able to. Yeah, a little bit. Let's soften that a little bit. I still want that to be fairly bright. So I don't want to get too much. paint on or you know I don't I don't want to pull too much paint over into where I want that little bit of little bit of brightness. Uh, I am gonna thicken up this line just a bit just because I know later it's gonna get darker uh, and thinner. So the fact that I have a little bit of this uh, kind of darker orange Let's go back to a little pyro orange. Um, yeah. Just kind of, I'm going to pull in a little scarlet lake over here, just a little bit more. A little bit much. I just want a bit more of that kind of peeking through. And then I can come down here and start working on this little area as well. Um, so I'm going to add some, uh, kind of quinacridone orange. No, why do I keep trying to say quinacridone orange? Permanent yellow orange, um, kind of in this area here. 
This is all mostly in uh, shadow, but some of it's kind of neat tone. Um, so I'm really just kind of building that up. I can come in now with some quinacridone gold. This would give that slightly earthy look with some of this wash. Maybe go back to a little Scarlet Lake over in here. Really just softening some of those lines back up after I put them down, uh, just so they fuzz out a little bit and blend out into the rest of this, this area. Uh, you know, a lot of this is gonna get or some of this is going to get quite a bit darker. Um, so even though this seems fairly dark at the moment, this isn't going to be. This you know this is really still going to be the light. Orange, I think, over here. Maybe a little opera. So this is just opera that I'm using right now. Uh, I know that there's a, a fair little chunk of shadow right there um, that I want to and then I'm just going to kind of come down here and put in a little bit more uh, color just kind of random I mean loosely add some kind of rocky sandy shapes. So I'm not really looking at anything on my sketch or on the photo. Uh, I just know that some of these areas are going to be a little bit darker uh, and some are going to be fairly light and I want a good kind of, of these kind of light middle tones. Let's go back to a little pyro orange down in there. Lake as well. Box. I got to turn my ceiling fan up. A wee bit of a draft going on. Last week it was really hot in here. Week gets a little chilly. <laughs> All right. So let me just kind of pull in on that just so you can see. Uh, you can see it's just a real loose kind of. Conglomeration of oranges and peaks. I got a little, little uh, uh, tighter than I wanted to right here, but uh, I don't even think it's dry yet. I could come back in and loosen some of that up just by adding a little, a little more kind of randomness to it. Um, Even though, you know, these look like, oh, I've added a whole slew of darts. They're all going to be um, very light mid-tones at best when we're done. I'm 
let's see. A little bit more over in here too. Yeah, that's okay. Not too unhappy with that. How's everybody doing? Lost. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible? Lost? Yeah. You need me to wait for you? No, I think I'm just going to watch you do it and then I'll uh, <laughs> I'll take it up outside of class. Okay. I work on it a little bit now, but my problem okay. is I don't had enough details on my drawing. I just did an overall. Oh yeah, well that's okay because uh, you can kind of make them up. You don't have to yeah. really necessarily follow. Um, you know, this is real loose uh, on my part. It's not. Uh, uh, don't don't get discouraged if yours is pretty loose. It's, oh, it kind of softened this. Pardon me. So up at this little area, there was a yoga class going on on the other side by the coffee shop and they had this really soothing music playing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Before that gets too dry, I'm gonna go ahead and start looking at kind of some more uh, kind of purples. And I want to start, so I think with a little alizarin crimson. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, it's not really purple. Um, it's kind of a, a, you know, pinkish red. That's what this is, or nope, that's not alizarin crimson. That's, that's why it's so purpley. Uh, let me just clean up the spot here. Um, that was permanent magenta. Uh, here's a lizard and crimson, so it's a little more red uh, than that. Uh, I want. I, I and I. I'm still going to use some of the the permanent magenta as well. Um, But I want to. Uh, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, I, I, I'm, I, the, the permanent magenta. I'm still going to use some permanent magenta, but I'm also. Uh, really, I, I want to start with this kind of a lizard and crimson uh, first. So, uh, and I'm just going to come back over into here. Now that looks really, really dark, but uh, uh, it's not, trust me. Uh, and again, uh, I put a fair amount of paint down, but uh, so, and I did feel like it was too much paint. Uh, so all I had to do was kind of clean my brush out um, and just add water. Uh, I can even come in with that. Uh, so that's the alizarin crimson here. We have some permanent magenta. Uh, or this may be quinacridone magenta. I can't remember. But it's one of the two. Um, A 
it was kind of switched back and forth. Add a little more of that. That's still uh, per, uh, alizarin crimson down in there. Uh, and then I'm going to come back in. Let's see. I kind of want that little tiny line right there. Uh, really, I think it's supposed to get a little thicker up here at the top, but I want that real thin line of alizarin crimson, and that may be as dark as that little section gets. Um, so I, I want that line to be pretty fine. Uh, let's come in with a little permanent magenta. And I can kind of soften as needed. Well, or a lizard in crimson, either. Okay. Orange. Um, I can even bring back the opera a little bit, uh, even though this is sort of a bit darker, uh, I can drop in a little opera in there, just, um, I don't know if you can see what's going on, I can't, I've got a little glare from the where, there we go. So you can see just a bit of that, that pink coming in. Uh, and then this whole uh, and then let's go back to some alizarin back up in here and let that kind of blend with the, the opera quinacridone or yeah quinacridone magenta or permanent magenta whatever can't remember if that's permanent magenta or not. Um, I think it's permanent magenta because quinacridone magenta is a little bit lighter than that. And then I want just a bit more of that up in here as well. Yeah, a bit of a weird blob of paint on my brush. And let me just redo the point a little bit. Just grab some alizarin crimson. We kind of get out towards that edge a little bit. Some of that back up. And kind of continue to work our way across. Uh, so let's see, I think I'm going to go with a little of this lizard and crimson again. I could even pull in. A little more Scarlet Lake if I wanted just a little bit brighter red um, in some of those areas. Let's see. There we go. Get rid of that. That glare. That's a bit of a... Let me 
switch over to some permanent magenta, pull that down from the Scarlet Lake. Let's see this whole thing. Darker. Hey, Tom. Hey. Let's see, I gotta. Let's see. Let's put a little Scarlet Lake in that. I like how that's looking. Um, I may even drop a little bit more over here since that's still pretty wet and it'll just kind of blossom in there. So that's still that Scarlet Lake that you're drawing or painting with. And, and then I'll switch back to, um, to some alizarin crimson. Soften, I wanna soften this edge up here. Uh, eventually it'll, there will be a, a bit of a hard edge up there, but I still want just to sort of be soft for that. So I'll just pull some of that up into there. Uh, add a little water. See that. Back to the permanent magenta. In a few spots. Sort of soften some edges over here to kind of give it that round rounded edge. Yeah, that's all right. And then down in here, this isn't strictly accurate on, on how this rock looks, but I want a little bit more dark in here as well. So I'm actually, I'm actually gonna grab a little an acridone violet, which is just slightly better. Drop that in, and a little bit too much water. Um, it will be moving into that quinacridone violet or whatever violet you have um, here shortly. Edge. Mm. Um, okay, so quinacridone. Nope, permanent uh, permanent magenta, uh, kind of into here. Uh, maybe just a skosh right into here as well. Let's kind of pull that in. Uh, what I may do is switch to a smaller brush. I think I'm gonna switch to this six, just so I can come over and soften this edge of that a little bit in some spots. Not all of them need to be softened, but but some of it. I want. I still want to to have a bit of fuzzy edge to some of that. What color was that, Michael? Uh, that was um, permanent magenta. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you have like quinacridone magenta, that would work. Um, yeah, I think I have. I have the. I think I have the permanent. Okay. Yeah. Using it. Um, 
So th this is also uh, cornacridone, or I'm sorry, permanent magenta um, over in here uh, as well. This whole thing is. I'm gonna grab some alizarin and crimson. This whole thing is actually in shade, so I want this whole thing to be darker. Uh, we'll get something really dark in there in a little bit. So let's go with alizarin crimson. Quinac, uh, permanent magenta. I can be a little less careful on the, you know, how this this goes. Yeah. Uh, over here, because it is going to be fairly dark when all said and done. Yeah, a bit there, so this whole whole section is kind of shadow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and overlap it a little bit. Let's see, I grabbed some lizard crimson over here. Just because I want a little bit of that mid-tone coming over into that light area. Let's see. And then down in here, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little Quinacridone violet, just for the bottom of this. I don't want this getting too dark right there, so I'm going to pick some of that back up if I can. Yeah, so that's got a nice little thing, and then when I come back in with that that sharper dark in some spots, that'll that'll really you know kind of put a nice flat face on it as well over here. Come down like so. Uh, and then I'm going to bring a little alizarin crimson over here into this section. Not a lot. I don't need it to go. Uh, it's not a huge dark area over here. Uh, but I am going to pull some of it up into some of these little lighter cracks that I've drawn in there with the oranges. Let's soften that edge a little bit. Pull that back over. Mm. Finish off with a little, little dark down in there. This actually gets, let's see, there's a little, there's a little bit of a dark crack right here too. So I'm going to pull that in. Um, I don't know if you can see. Let me you can kind of see where I have the dark, and then I kind of have, or the the darker mid tone, if you will, and then I have this lighter mid tone right there, and I want to kind of save that little little shape. So I'm gonna stop painting now. Move on over here. Uh, and let's see this. This is gonna kind of come down into a a little bit of a darker dark. And there so, up into a little bit of a darker dark there. So that's uh, that's uh, permanent magenta. I'm going to switch over into some alizarin and crimson. Up into here. And there's actually a shadow that goes over the kind of top of this bit. 
out and then gets a little wider. Somehow. It's not super important that it's exactly like that. Let me grab a little lizard and crimson right here. I think I was using permanent magenta right there. Soften that. Gonna get darker, uh, and I want some mid on that. This little bit right here probably won't get too much darker, uh, so I'm gonna add just a hint of uh, quinacridone violet to that. Uh, probably on screen, it looks very similar to what I had, uh, and then. Let's go ahead and pull some over here as well. Some of these kind of little finger things. Well, they're all kind of fingers, aren't they? Uh, so that was permanent. I'm going to switch back to some alizarin crimson. Here. Uh, let's Well, a little bit of a well, that all happens soon enough. So a little, little more lizard and crimson. Let's soften some of that. And then maybe some of that pretty dark, dark right in here. So I'm going to drop just a bit of um, quinacridone violet down in there. Uh, eventually, it'll get a little bit darker. And then there's actually a little bit of a cast shadow here. So I'm going to just start to hint at that by pulling some of this over here. So just a bit of a cast shadow. I, I can darken that up later if I need to. Um, drop a little more color in there. Maybe I'll even use a little top blue in that shadow, that cast shadow part. Even though I'm painting this all kind of at the same time, um, it's okay to drop a little bit of that in there just to I actually like how that looks. I'm going to grab a little more pe peacock blue and bring that in over here as well. Just, just while all this is wet, some of that to run into it. Uh, okay, enough of that. Let me go back to the uh, permanent magenta. shadow here. Uh, I really like this little bit of light that I've got there. I want to save that. Uh, and then this other little bit of light as well. So 
Absolutely. So that was permanent magenta. And now I'm going to grab, or was it? Or was that a lizard and crimson? No, that was permanent. Well, I don't know. No, that was a lizard and crimson. Sorry. They're kind of similar. It was permanent magenta. I apologize. I'm mixing myself up. I'm going to just pull more of that alizarin crimson over this way. drop a little peacock blue in there. I probably should have done a little of that over there because I really like how that looks. Get that to run, but it's not too late to add some to other other stuff here in a minute. Let's see here. Let's go back to this print. Pull some of that down into this little deep. These are all kind of semi fact, but mostly made up little little shapes that kind of felt craggy and rocky to me. So um, I'm not overly concerned with somebody remembering or recognizing where this is. Uh, if they do, great, but as long as they just enjoy looking at it, that's really the, that's really the key. So I switched up to a little little opera right there. Uh, in this, I want a little more pink over here. This particular rock is a little more pink and orange, so. And I don't mind the little bits of you know, kind of odd shapes. And shapes there. A little more opera over here as well. I'm gonna pull in a little bit of a little bit of peacock down there. And then go into a little bit of opera right next to it. Just for some more little shadowy bits towards the bottom. Uh, to help weigh this down. Uh, and then back into some permanent magenta. I need some of this to be, uh, you know, to have a little bit of weight at the bottom. I'm going to add a little of this over here as well. Uh, actually, it comes over. Remember, this shadow kind of comes over this way a little bit. Not that it matters, but I remember liking that shape. There. And there you see my way. Let's go to the quinacridone, or I mean permanent magenta down here as well. All right, 
with a little peacock blue. There we go. A Pull that up into there. Yeah, I'm kind of wishing I had done a little of that over there. I really like, I don't know why I didn't think of that until way over here. But I really like how that peacock blue blended in there with that. It just made a really interesting color that I couldn't mix in a million years. Kind of soften up, and this needs to come. This this sort of needs to come up just a bit and be down into the rest of this. And this was that quinacridone violet that I used there a little bit. I just need to pull that down into here a little bit more so it's yeah. so I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna come back over here. This is dryish, uh, but I can add a little uh permanent magenta over in here. Spot. And then come back in. I'm gonna see what happens when I add a little peacock blue down in here and just sort of let that run together. That's kind of interesting. Not quite as interesting as what I have going on over here, but it's still kind of interesting. I'm going to add a little of that peacock blue over in here. Back out and soften it a bit. Uh, and really, what this does, you know, the blue mixes with the orange uh, and makes an interesting kind of dark neutral that's a little brighter than, say, a, an actual neutral color. You know, a little more, or not bright, I shouldn't say brighter, but a little more vibrant. Um, just a normal, um, neutral color. Uh, okay, I'll bring a little more of this connection or permanent magenta over here uh, and back into some of this peacock blue. Opera in some places. And a little, you have a truck. A little more peacock blue. bit to this. So I have these kind of darker shapes that are a little hard to see uh, on this. And now's where I can kind of start to, um, so I've got a little peacock blue right here, uh, actually a fair amount. Um, and I'm just going to kind of fill in some of that shape. Uh, not that accurately, not too worried about it. Uh, if it goes past that shape, that's okay too. 
south in some spots, some parts. I did. I started to say spots and ended with the word parts, so it came out spots. Uh, and then I'm going to come back in with a little of that permanent magenta. And again, some of these, well, that's kind of an interesting shape that I accidentally made there. I like that better than the one I drew. Um, let's see, let's come in with a little opera. Just want to. I'm, I'm going to start hinting some of these dark areas. Um, there. Let's see. That's a. That's kind of a. Uh, that ended up being a mix of opera and peacock blue that just sort of happened when I was up in this area. Um, it ended up continuing down. And I'm going to grab a little just peacock blue now and finish it off with that. Bring a little water back in there and have that kind of run together. If later I feel like this shadow doesn't end up dark enough, I can always darken it. So, Let's come over here, little little quinacridone violet, and then add some peacock blue to that. Just to start cooling off. Some of this, this shadow. Just bringing in this a little bit of that peacock blue into that mid tone. Weird dot that I didn't care for. And then I want a little peacock blue over in this too. I mean, I'll, I will end up adding some dark, you know, some cooler colors to these shadows, but uh, I'm, I'm going to add a little peacock blue first. Uh, also going to that really thin line right there. I do want that to be actually a, a little cooler. So I'm going to add that peacock blue on top of it. Uh, even though permanent magenta and lizard crimson are cooler on the scale, say, you know, than this one, they're still fairly warm colors, and I, I want that to kind of be a little cooler. You heard me.
So let me uh, let me do a little bit down in here as well. Let's start off with a little alizarin and crimson. Just a little alizarin crimson, and then I'll pull in a little peacock blue probably down in here. That's a bit much. So we'll just add some water. Let's go back to that. Let's say we're using alizarin crimson, so let's. They're very similar. I don't know which one I grabbed. I think it was actually permanent magenta that I was using. Now uh, that was a little, it's a little hard to tell sometimes. And, and down here, I'm just going to start painting some kind of shapes that kind of feel rocky to me. You know, so I've got a little bit of a shadow there. Uh, maybe there's, or, you know, chunks of that sandstone that have fallen off. Uh, again, I don't want a lot of detail, but I am going to add a little, little of that down in there. Um, not really going with the peacock blue first here, and then I'm going to grab a little opera. Come up into here. Let's see this one. Bit of a shadow in there. And again, these are just kind of geometric shaped um, lines that I'm making with, that was peacock blue, obviously. Uh, let me go in with a little quinacridone violet uh, down in here. Um, these rocks, you know, have kind of some, they have some striations in them that are, you know, not perfectly straight or anything, but somewhat lines. Um, so really, I'm just kind of making up some of those those shapes. Little bit darker here. This is this is again still that permanent magenta. I decided to just kind of make that whole section right there in the shadow. For no other reason than I thought it needed it. Let me grab a little peacock blue, pull that into there and get that to run. Let's go in with a little opera. Drop some of that into here. Uh, and now back to some of that peacock blue. Too much. Not that it hurts anything, it's just come back in with just a clean brush that's just wet. A little opera. This is going to be a 
pink right there, and then we'll come in with a little peacock blue. This should look really loose. I just switched over into a little uh, quinacridone magenta or permanent magenta. I want to make right there. I don't really like that one, so let's get rid of that bit. And let's come back in with some peacock blue. Naples. Still want it to be a little pink side. Uh, I can always add a little orange to it as well, a little Scarlet Lake or something. In fact, I may think I am going to add a little Scarlet Lake. Yeah. Some of these dots. Later, after this drives, I can actually add a, a wash of Scarlet Lake to kind of give everything a bit of. A bit of a red cast. Let's, see, let's come in with a little. Turn it into down in here. And some of these kind of chunky rock shapes. Got blue. That was permanent magenta again. Here. Now switch over to the permanent magenta again. Really, this is just a shape. I like that one, so pick it up and make it a bigger blob. Sorry, I think I hit a wall. I uh, woke up at five this morning and couldn't fall back to sleep. Uh, I'm going to add just a bit more quinacridone magenta up in here. A couple of spots, too. I just felt like it needed a little more, more of that. A couple of spots before that. Completely. 
Group. I don't know about you guys, but my painting feels like it's in that kind of grumpy teenage period. Uh, I can't decide if I like it or not. So, um, but don't uh, don't panic. Is this enough? Ooh. Um. Every, every painting kind of goes through one of those kind of phases um, where you're not sure you like it. So don't, like I said, don't panic. Um, I'm gonna kind of leave that alone for right now. And I'm gonna come in and work on a little of this foreground. Um, these, what I've done is really zoomed in on those trees um, that are in the foreground and I've actually just got like a few tree shapes here and instead of that whole like field of trees or whatever yeah. not field but that whole kind of plane of trees that are there I just want to see just a few I want to simplify it down to just maybe three uh, you know I've got kind of a tree shape here I've got another one here maybe this one and maybe, maybe there might be four uh, and then back in here, there's a whole slew of trees and stuff, but those are going to get simplified even more. Um, so um, for this, I'm going to start off with a little, um, just so I can get a little highlight area in my trees. Uh, I'm going to start off with a little lemon yellow. And I'm going to kind of use my... I'm gonna, for, for the first little bit, I'm going to use my, uh, my flat brush uh, just to kind of put some, uh, really the light is coming from over here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I, I just want a little bit of the tops of the trees uh, and some little spots in, you know, some little areas that have just little highlights. Uh, so I'm just randomly moving my brush around. Uh, I'm kind of changing the angle with what, you know, on how I put it place it on the paper. Uh, I'm, you know, I might use the chisel end. Uh, I might use the side and kind of push it. Um, any, any of those things will work. Um, so just add in just a hint of highlight to that. Uh, and then I'm going to come in with a little, little hooker's green just by itself, uh, which normally I would uh, maybe use one of the other greens first, but these are gonna. These are evergreens, and I want them to be. You know, I, I don't. They're not grass green. They're not. They're not gonna have that kind of bright green that uh, permanent green number one or number two has. I want kind of this blue green uh, of the um, hooker's green. Uh, and then in a little while, we'll add some even darker. We'll, we'll mix some of that with uh, with some blue and get a nice, even dark, darker green. And so right now, I'm just kind of moving my brush around, making different marks with it, not too concerned with what those marks are other than kind of changing the direction. Uh, maybe I'll add a little peacock blue just so I get a little bit of gray blue in there. What was the green it's again? Yellow, it'll kind of gray it down in some spots. Kind of pull some of that in. Michael, what was the green? The green? Yes. Uh, it was hooker's green. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, just some hookers green. Um, uh, I did. I, I could have used, you know, like a lot of times I'll use permanent green number one or permanent green number two. 
uh, which is, you know, like a grass green and just a slightly darker green green. Um, but I, I wanted more of a blue green in these. They're evergreens of some, you know, they're kind of the color that I'm looking for. It's kind of an evergreen color. Uh, and then I'm also grabbing a little hooker's green and throwing that in. Um, well, and again, kind of a hodgepodge of, of different brush strokes, sometimes just plopping it down. You know, the chisel in to get a kind of a straighter uh, shape. I'm going to pick some of the uh, I don't want this to get too dry before I start adding some of the other darker colors, but I want it to dry just to scotch. Uh, Sorry. For a second. Uh, I don't want to really dry it with my hair dryer. Um, I cleaned out my brush and I just have water softening a couple of spots where it felt like it needed. I can even do kind of some sweeping uh, kind of shapes. Oh, my brush. Oh, there it is. Kind of give it. Awesome. Uh, okay, so while that is not that dry yet, I am going to come in with a little hooker's green royal blue mix. So I already have a little bit of it over here. I'm going to, and it's mostly royal blue. So I'm just going to add a little bit. Actually, I know that was all royal blue on top there. Uh, I'm just going to add a little more green to it as I feel like I need maybe a little more blue. I can add a little more of that. Uh, and I have a fairly well loaded brush. It's still a fair amount of water in it, too. Um, so. Uh, um, So it should run pretty good. And I'm just going to start putting that down in a few little spots. I feel like I want some darker darks. Again, these are, this is going to dry. It's going to be a little bit lighter than the way it is now. It's not that much darker. Or it won't dry that much darker than, than what I've got on there. Mainly because it's so wet, and that's okay. I kind of want it to turn into some of that other color. I'm going to pick up some of this excess water on the edge here. I remember Jeannie emailed me and said she wasn't going to be me too. taking my fairly dry brush and adding some kind of spiky little shapes in there. So I don't know if you can see those really well. Let me zoom in and see I've kind of added uh, a little spikiness. 
top of that just, just because it's kind of that kind of that type of tree. I want to have a they're, you know, they're junipers. We don't really need to name them, but, uh, but that's the kind of look I'm going for. So somewhat rounded, but also they'll have little little twigs and bits and bottoms and stuff. So. So what I'm going to do now is kind of come in. I, I want to do a little bit here, um, and I probably start off up here. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, quinacridone gold up there. <coughs> uh, so if you have yellow ochre, that's a good substitute if you don't have quinacridone gold. Um, and now. What I'm going to do is, so I've got this quinacridone gold. Uh, it's actually still a little bit of blue in my. I'm going to put that down kind of on the top of this, uh, and then back here in the background. But I'm also going to come in with a little hooker's green in a few spots and just kind of pop that down. We're going to start hinting at plants and stuff. So I'm not going to paint the whole blue or anything like that. Just kind of a sculpt variation up here. You know, we may add some different texture later, but right now we're just looking for trying to in here. That's, uh, I don't know, let me, let me zoom in on that too, because if I zoom, let me grab my, I mean, let me grab my phone and pull it down. And see. Um, really, that's just kind of quinacridone gold and, and a little hooker's green. Uh, it kind of has a blue tint. And I think it's kind of the same up in here too. So I'm going to grab a little quinacridone gold. You can see over here. I'm like, I could even grab like a little, um, just to give it a little variation in color, uh, I could add a little um, scarlet, what I did right there. Uh, and then a little of that hooker's green. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, before it gets too dry, I'm going to do a little Scarlet Lake up in here, too. So really, all this is, is just a quick little... Wash. I don't want to get too close to those trees. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I spent so much time making those white little spiky things. They really need to be darker. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Green up. Uh, so really, again, just a kind of multicolored anacrodon gold, a little bit of Scarlet Lake, uh, some Hooker's Green. And all that is is just starting to add um, color, and eventually we'll like kind of text on that.
some of this up in some spots. Usually some of this stuff get darker and or be lighter than what's going on in the background. some of this color off. That's looking pretty good. Did Richard not, did he log out? I guess he did, I don't, I don't see him on, he was right here earlier. Just the, yeah, so let me, let's, let's let that dry a little bit. That's still a little damp, but it's dry enough. Um, I think I want a little bit more orange on some of these spots. I really like what I've got going on here um, and here. So I, th I think I want a little bit more orange on this area here too. So I'm just gonna come in. It doesn't have to be a lot. I'm just gonna grab some uh, permanent uh, yellow orange uh, and just uh, kind of pull that even past where that shadow is going to be uh, a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of an orange cast in a couple of spots. Uh, and then I can even grab some, some opera to kind of give it give like a pink, uh, pinkish orange kind of, kind of look. Just a little bit more orange and pink. Let's bring in a little bit of orange right here. And maybe just a skosh more right in there. That's really going to be fairly light, but I just wanted it a little bit orange, more on the orange side than uh, some of this. Just a little bit more on the orange side. Maybe just a bit more here as well. Yep. Just adding little bits of orange. I accidentally touched my on my palette. I accidentally touched my orange to my hooker's green and 
started running. So now the pallet's dry right there, it won't run too much past that. <clears throat> I don't, I don't mind it mixing sometimes, but uh, in this instance, I want just a little bit of orange, not a little bit of green. So, skosh, whoops. So just a skosh more orange kind of in a couple of these spots. Uh, they're still really light, so I'm not too worried about them getting, being a little darker. Uh, I like how this light area here is a little just a little more on the orange side instead of kind of on that pale orange i think i just got the hiccups Uh, and I'm, I'm going to add a little more orange down in here as well. Let's see, we're at the number 10. Uh, and really, it's just kind of a, a thin wash of, of orange down in here uh, and over some of this stuff. That looks like a whole lot of paint that I just added there, but I didn't really, uh, and I can pick it up. Yeah. So that just adds a little bit more orange, red. I mean, I could have even used a little Scarlet Lake, um, a little more red, orange, which I think I'm gonna pull in right about there. Um, maybe just a bit more of that down in here too. Uh, again, once I add, you know, that looks like a whole lot of paint that I added, but once I add some water, that'll really lighten it back up. Keep that pretty light. There's. And then I can go back in just with a thirsty brush and pick some of that back up just by, by really squeezing out the 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 paint, you know, everything from my brush. So it's damp, uh, but it's not uh, not wet. Where was it? That was right there. Even come back in, maybe with a little, just a hint of water right in here, and pick some of that back up too. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so I want to come back in now that this is pretty dry, uh, and I want to add some darker, some darker greens uh, and and blues and purples. Um, so I'm just going to use my number ten brush, you know, my number ten round. Uh, I've got some royal blue over in the corner of my palette over here, so I'm just going to wet that down. Pull some more back out. Actually, that may have been indigo, but that's all right. A uh, little royal blue. So any dark blue that you've got, uh, I've still got this kind of dark blue green. Uh, and then I want to use a little uh, quinacridone. In fact, I'm just going to kind of clean this spot off over here. Maybe just a bit. 
Uh, I've got a little uh, anacrodone violet, and I want to mix that with a little royal blue just to get a nice purple. There we go. Uh, and I can even make a little bit of a dark neutral, which is a little green, blue, and purple mixed together. Grab a little more. So, uh, so I've got some choices here, uh, and now I'm going to. Um, I think I'm going to start off with just some royal blue, and some spots, uh, and I really like this kind of light shape that happened here. Uh, that kind of happened by mistake, but I want to kind of save it. Uh, I like a little bit of these highlights that I've got saved there as well. So I'm going to come in uh, and kind of look at maybe there's a, a little dark area here uh, of leaves or uh, not leaves, pine needles, uh, whatever, <laughs> tree, tree things. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to switch to a little of the, the, the purple mix that I made. Again, uh, quinacridone violet and uh, royal blue. Back to the uh, kind of the green back up in here. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of pull that all want this so that's really just a you know to cover that kind of corner I don't I didn't want anything too too light leading into that corner uh, so I just decided I made the executive decision to kind of to kind of uh, cover that over uh, and then I'm gonna bring in that uh, bring in a little of the green up into here and some spots. back into some of that blue. There's a little sh shadow on the top of that little spiky thing. Uh, let's go into right down in here and use some of that sort of mid, uh, neutral color that I mixed up. Because it's so close to the edge, uh, and then I want to soften this kind of up in here, kind of pull that up, and really what I'm doing there is just kind of twisting my brush, uh, and that just makes another kind of mark. Wow, I feel like my sh <laughs> shoulders giving out on me. Um, if this gets too dark, uh, I can always come back over and lift some of that, as you'll recall. Uh, so let's see, I want a little, little dark back over in here. In that area, that's just uh, the um, royal blue. And then now I just grabbed a little of the green And some of the purple mix. So I want this to be a little darker over here. Maybe like so. Uh, really, just thinking about trees—not tree shapes, but well, they are tree shapes. Um, I'm not naming the kind of tree, but I, you know, I, I have a vision for the uh, the shape of the tree that I'm. I'm wanting to portray here. Um, uh, 
I can use the side of my brush to kind of get some funky sweeping strokes in there. Uh, it gives me a really cool little texture as well. Um, pull it that way. So basically I'm just using the side of my brush. It's a little dry, but not totally dry uh, and getting some cool texture. Uh, let's go back to, let's see, I was using that purple. Let's go back to some of the dark green mix, Royal Blue and Hooker's Green. Just lay some of that down in here like so. back to that purple. I kind of like that, how that purple looks in, in here. And then maybe just to some royal blue, some just plain royal blue. And I want it kind of dark down in this corner. That's really dark right there, so I want to make sure that uh, it's not quite as dark as it looked. Uh, although I do want a little more of that royal blue just to drop in. The cool thing, you know, again, if I feel like this is not got enough texture uh, or it's too dark, uh, I can, uh, let's see, I'm switching back to that purple. Uh, I, can, I can come back in and lift some of this out. More of that there, um, and the forgot what I was saying. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. Uh, so I'm just mixed. I'm going back and forth. Uh, right now, I'm using that purple, uh, and I think that that's a pretty good spot. Let's pull some of that dark down in there. Blue. Good Lord. I think my shoulder popped out of the socket a little bit. Ow. Ah. And it happened. That hasn't happened to me in a long time. All right. That works. I don't want to overwork this area. It's, you know, it's going to be dark because it's up front. Um, well, and the trees are dark, but, you know, it'll, even though, you know, a lot of times we say, well, we're going to put the darkest stuff behind because that pushes the lighter stuff forward. Sometimes the dark stuff gets pushed forward too. So uh, it just depends on where, obviously you can tell this is the foreground. So, um, So it actually pushes it kind of forward. And once we add a little more texture in there, I think we'll be in uh, good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this real quick. Whoops. Dropping everything. And we can actually come in uh, and do some of this neutral back here. 
you know, in the photo, it's a lot closer uh, to this um, sort of these this these finger rocks here, uh, but uh, I I want to push that further back in space. I don't want it quite as close. Um, so I'm going to take some of these neutral colors, um, uh, and I think I'm going to I'm going to take a little bit of the purple. And green, I'll kind of angle that over so you can see. Uh, I'm gonna I have a little bit of the royal blue and the green, uh, and I'm gonna pull in some of this this violet here so I get kind of a neutral, might need a little bit more violet. Uh, I get kind of a neutral blue gray. There we go. So that's now a little on the violet side. Let me just put in a little hooker's green, which probably make it a little on the green side, but that's okay. Because uh, I want it kind of in the green blue area. But I want it a little more neutral. I don't want it quite as vibrant. Let me just add a wee bit more of that. There we go. So it's still, I don't know how, whoops. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me see if I can Uh, it's kind of a, you know, kind of a blue, gray, green, gray, blue, green, gray, um, that I want back there. Um, and that will really, because, um, those are complementary colors for everything here, that'll really make this stuff pop. Um, now I don't want it real dark. I mean, obviously that mix on my palette looks really dark, but I'm going to have a whole lot of water uh, in my brush. So it's mostly going to be water. Uh, and if I feel like it's too dark, uh, I can add more water. So I'm going to just come in. See, I can already tell that's a little darker than I want. I can just clean my brush. Yeah, that's a little lighter than I want. So I'll add a little more paint. Uh, but I can, clean, you know, kind of clean my brush out and find the perfect kind of green gray uh, mix. So and I think because these are such small, I'm going to actually move to my number six brush. Normally I'd paint this probably with a slightly lighter, larger brush, but I want, I want to kind of get down into that hole pretty good right there. Uh, so we'll just be pulling that across. Let's see, a little more water. And if I get a little overlap, that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, pick that back up over here. Again, that's a little on the dark side. But once I add a little water here in a second, and even just kind of pull it out, I may not even have to add water. Uh, that was a pretty intense puddle, but now once I've kind of spread it out, more of the paper is showing through that puddle. I am going to add a little more water just to kind of. Uh, and I may need to add just a hint more of the violet to this because it's just a little more green than I want. Let me just pick a little, yep, there we go. So that looks a little purple right now, but as soon as that kind of mixes on the paper, it'll, it'll dull that down a little bit. Gray, you know, gray it down just a skosh. I want this line to be fairly sharp. I need to make sure I get that in there. And then do you go over the colors you mixed to begin with right there? Sure. So this is um uh quinacridone magenta uh hooker's green uh and royal blue uh, and it just makes a, a nice neutral, like a dark green, you know, and just mix it up to the, you know, kind of 
I did was I kind of played with it on my palette until I got a, a kind of gray green. Uh, it ended up being just a wee bit too green. So I went back in and added a little more magenta right here and here. Um, but basically what I was trying to do was mix it up. So it was kind of a, a I guess I should say greenish gray um, because this kind of neutral back here will really make these things pop because they're gonna be so vibrant. Um, so it'll be just back here kind of in the background uh, as a, a shape in the distance. Um, so again, it's just uh, hooker's green, royal blue and, and, hooker, uh, and quinacridone magenta. Um, but just mixed up until I got this kind of neutral color uh, that I like. I'll show you what that looks like again. Um, it's it's just kind of it almost looks like a black or something, but it's it's uh, it's really a neutral green. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And, and then I ended up, like I said, pulling a little bit more violet over into it. But. But yeah, that's that's all that is. And I may even want, so I've got this coming down in here, but I may even want this to be a little bit lighter down in here, just to be, maybe there's a little haze or something going on down in this little canyon back over here or something. Right? A little bit darker right in there. But you can see how that's really making this start to pop forward by doing that little bit of Just a skosh. Ah. So I can pull this down. Yeah, that's really going to help. Really going to help uh, push these these fingers forward. Just, just that neutral back there. And, and it just simplifies that background, you know, the, all that cliff face back there. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, and somewhere I think I have a picture of that too, but um, where I was more taking a picture of that cliff face back there than the, these fingers, but, um, but really what we're interested in are, are these fingers. Particularly, I think, I'm starting to think that this may be where we really focus in. in the That's not too bad. I'm gonna dry this real quick. And it should dry just a wee bit lighter than it was. Yeah, 
that's starting to come up, come together. Kind of step back a minute and look at it. I mean, it's it's a long way from done. I mean, there's still a lot to do on this, but I think it's starting to starting to read. I'm I'm liking it better than the one I tried several years ago. So. Uh, Um, yeah. Just kind of looking it over. Yeah, I think, uh, so I think what I'm going to do is come in. I want a little bit of darker things going on down in here uh, to kind of sort of show this highlight of that, but I don't want to get too dark. Uh, but I, and, and actually I think I'm not going to do that yet. I think I'm going to come back up here uh, because now I want some of those cooler colors to start coming in those purples. And I mean, I have a little bit of that blue, but I really want to start coming in with some some violets. Um, so I am going to use quinacridone violet just by itself. I don't know what you guys can see that right there. Um, but then I'll probably end up using a little peacock blue, which I'll put over. Uh, put a little peacock blue down in there. Uh, I'm, I probably will come back to a little opera as well. We'll put that in, get a nice little puddle of that going. Just some cooler. I mean, this, this quinacridone violet is still actually fairly warm compared to some, but, um, I want to, I'm going to start off over in here, actually. Uh, I've already got a little of that going on, but I want a little more. Uh, I come in. I want to kind of define these little, there's, there's these little mini fins uh, kind of in here that I like. I don't want to get too detailed because it's so close to the edge of the, the paper, but. I do kind of want them to kind of show up a little bit. So that's a little uh, quinacridone violet. Uh, and then I dropped in a little peacock blue right next to it. Uh, and then what we'll do is bring a little more peacock blue up into here. Uh, and I, this is where we start getting the sharper, sharper shadows. The sharper edges and shadows. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to come in with just a wee bit more of this violet here, just to kind of pull that, and then into a little peacock blue. And a little hot girl over here. Pull that down in there. Let's go back to the <coughs> excuse me. Let's go back to the violet over here. There's kind, of a, there's kind of a little bit of a 
different shadowy thing. So that's kind of a mid-tone right there. Uh, there's this dark color that, you know, kind of a dark shape that comes down and then this comes back into here. Um, dark blue back down in there. Uh, and then there is actually a, an even darker bit uh, that'll come in. Pull in a little of this there. Just a little bit of darker rock kind of up in here. Uh, there is a darker little crack in here that we'll get to later. Uh, but this is kind of the, the darker mid-tone. <laughs> So we had like a lighter mid-tone, a mid-tone, and now we're in the kind of darker mid-tone. Um, and then we'll have the dark when we're done. That was a little peacock blue right there, just to really give that sharp edge. Uh, and then I can kind of pull it back out here. Maybe a little violet down in here. Kind of sharpen some of this out that I softened up. This is pretty, but I think it needs just a hint more of the but I could own violet. And then that I'm not caring for it at all. So I think I'm just going to go back to the way it was and just sharpen, sharpen that edge up. And pull this down. I think what's missing is this, this kind of mid tone soft area here. It's bugging me. There we go. I'll take what else. Soften that up just a bit. Okay, so let's see. Back to Quinacridone Violet, I think. Over in here. A little of that. Let's go to a little opera. Um, edge here. Uh, and then into some peacock blue. Down in here. I really like this color that I've got going on there, so I want to kind of try and save that bit. Uh, there is a shadow here, uh, but I'm not necessarily, you know, I, I, I that's just a suggestion. Uh, I really like what I've got going on right there, so I'm going to try and save that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to come in with maybe a little opera right here. Uh, and then back into some of that on magenta down in here. Get that kind of sharp edge. That up in there. A sharp edge, crack looking thing. A little more peacock blue down in here. We'll just add that. That down in here as well, uh, and then back into the quinacridone violet. Uh, I want this little bit of a sharper edge right there. Uh, again, I like this kind of orange there, that so I'm going to try and save that, not paint over it.
But I do want to add some, you know, bits of rock that are maybe in shadow. There's a bit of shadow here. Uh, some of this I'm making up because I want to make this shape a little more interesting than it is. Um, in real life, it's kind of a smooth, and, and it's cool, don't get me wrong, but it, I, you know, this is my rock, not the one that's real. So I can, I can give it some craggier bits that I think make it a little bit more interesting. So that was uh, quinacridone violet. Uh, and then I'm just going to kind of soften it. Over on this side. So I have that one sharp edge. Uh, and then I think I'm going to add, just because I want a little bit of bright right there, I'm going to come over and add a little bit of uh, permanent yellow orange next to that. Um, and then pick up that edge over here and let that kind of blend in and see what happens. It's kind of interesting. We'll see if I like it or don't. I want to smooth this bit out. It, it this this rock kind of has a kind of a sort of a elephant shape, you know, like here's the head, maybe the eye right there and the trunk kind of comes down into there. Um, even in real life, it kind of has that, that look. Grab just a wee bit of pyro orange and put it over here. Uh, just to give it a little more redness right there. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, dropping everything. So it's uh eight fifty now. Do you do you want me to look at y'all's paintings? Well we can stop here. This is a good stopping point, I think. Um and I can take a look at I think there's only two of you in class today. I don't know what happened to Richard. Uh, did I accidentally mute you, Linda? There. Can I think, you hear me? I think I may have accidentally muted you when I was pushing a button. No uh, big deal. <laughs> uh, do, do you guys want to do that? Have me take yeah. a look at yours and then... I don't know that mine was worth looking at, but you can look at it. <laughs> I'm serious. It's going to take serious work. That's all right. Sometimes it's a practice one. Are you going to go first, Jesse, or am I? I will. I got way behind, but. So did I. I'm really, mine is really a disaster. <laughs> oh, that looks pretty good, Jess. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's looking pretty good. Let's see. Let me get a, a screenshot of that. Got it. Let me see if I can figure out where I go to to let's see, not that one. Must be this one. No. There we go. Hmm. I always have problems trying to decide. I'm looking for the little thing that says it'll record me. Oh yeah, I think it's um in the uh uh showing up in the lower left hand corner or upper left it's the thing that looks like a little video nope 
on the iPad, mine's up in the top right. Oh, top right. Well, see, I'm on the I'm on an iPad. I'm on a tablet, but I, it it's change. It's like it changes every time. Let's go ahead and eat, and you can talk about Jesse's while I try to find mine. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I think this is looking really good. Um, I think what you'll need to do is just start to get those war or cooler, you know, shadows in these areas. Uh, just keep building that up. And then um, once you put that kind of, uh, that, that gray, uh, kind of gray green, you know, or whatever, uh, kind of, you know, hills back there. Yes. Um, I think that'll really help pop these forward, too. Um, but, uh, but really, I think, yeah, I think just this really cool. I like your rock shapes that you've got going on. I think once you just start adding a cooler shadow to, uh, in there, you're going to be in good shape. Same with, uh, you know, over here, uh, adding some some of those shadow shapes. Because uh, these are really great shapes that you've got going on. Uh, I think you just need to build up more of that. Um, you know, you can even... Uh, now, yeah, this is just going to be black. Uh, you know, you can even break up some of this with some kind of verticals and, and horizontals that kind of look like... Actually, it'd probably be more like in that angle, but uh, that look like... You know, this kind of, uh, these are terrible lines that I'm drawing. Um, you know, they kind of look like that, that fractured sandstone. Uh-huh. Um, I think you could add, because this is a little more, this shape right in here has a little more traditional, traditional, that's not really the, the a little more um, kind of standard, Cliff face. These are these have the little finger pinnacle kind of shapes that you've got here. Um, okay. So I think once you start adding uh, you, this, like this will get broken apart here just by a really sharp edge on on the one edge, uh, and then just pull it out softer, you know, soften it this way. Um, give it a real good sharp edge up against there. Um, and that'll sort of push this bit of rock right here behind this bit of rock uh, right here. Because here's that kind of elephant head shape that you've got going on there. That's really good. This just needs to be those, those darker dark. Um, and even down into... You know, you can you can even pull these down all the way down into, you know, some of them down into this, in this area. Is that making sense? Yeah, yeah that is. Yeah. Um, and then this actually is dark. this whole area on this side is mm -hmm. fairly dark. Uh, I'm not doing a very good job of drawing a you know, shape because a it's a mouse in Photoshop. <laughs> It's just not, not watercolor, but but you know this can be dark. Then fuzz it. You know, start blending it in this way. So come in with those cooler darks, uh, and then blend it. Uh, kind of like that. Same with there's a little bit of a there could be a little bit of a you know shape here. It's. Um, you know, regardless of what the floor looks like, it feels like maybe a separate little bit of rock. So this would be, this would all get that kind of those cool darks uh, here and then blend that. So you'll have a sharp edge along here and then you'll blend it into here. Uh -huh. um, so anywhere you feel like, you know, like, okay, this, this rock kind of comes down uh, in front of this stuff. Uh, maybe here. Uh, so this all this uh, can go 
pushed back a little bit. And this can all be those cool dark. Uh, we are going to end up adding a little bit more super dark, uh, but I won't get into that yet. So I should do that. That's kind of the shape right in here. Uh, but, you know, like any of these can kind, of, um, kind of be made into, you know, kind of a, a darker, craggy area um, where it goes from being a line to being more of a, a shape. And then down into kind of that tighter point. Um, so these can all start to get that cooler blues and purples. Kind of like what you started here. Um, this this can all, this is nice. This, you can even put some of that, you know, over this direction. Uh, you know, this can all work. But this this can all be a cool wash for the whole thing, and then get a little darker in this area here. So this can all be kind of a cool wash of purples and whatnot. Uh, same for all these, uh, where where you've got some of this uh, picking up some of these some of these craggy bits. Uh huh. Uh, with start adding the cooler purples and blues. Uh, yeah, just kind of thicken this up. Not great shapes there. Uh, they just need to be, some of those lines need to not be lines anymore. They, they, they can be sharp edges on some part, but, uh, but they, they just need to be thickened up so that they're, they're more of a shape than a line. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, you know, just kind of Something like that. Just just sticking up. Even this one maybe a little, a little thicker. And regardless of what the rock looks like, um, you know, you, you, yours is going to be different. That's okay. Um, so you can make, you know, where 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 you've got extra little bits. That's okay because that's kind of neat. This thing, down maybe more into there. I like how this is sort of divided into two bits. Um, it it kind of is in real life, but I like I like how you divided it up. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and then, like even this bit right here can start to get because it's um, uh, it's it's a little bit closer drag right there. Mm -hmm. But okay. yeah. Other than that, and then later we'll come back in and we'll lift some of this to add more texture to your tree. But those are, I really like how this, these shapes you've got going on up here. Those are pretty cool. So that's looking pretty neat. Okay. That, shapes, that's Jesse. Do this week. Right on. <laughs> Let's see. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I'm, I put my, oops. Okay, I'm gonna reposition. You tell me when I've got it there because I kind of put it on a, on an easel. Oh, okay, hold, hold it right there, that's perfect. Let me grab the, let me grab the, it's a, it's a wee bit, it's a, it's a, yeah. There you go, oh, you had it. And right, hang, hang tight right there, got it. Yeah, I know I have need a lot of detail work. That's okay. I think I think you're kind of in the same same boat. Let's wait till that. There we go. I have to wait till it it takes the picture and it just sort of sits down in the corner of my uh, my uh, screen, and then I have to wait till it deposits it on my uh, desktop. <laughs> so let's see here. Place. Okay. So I got a good picture of it, and uh, let's share the screen. Yeah, I think uh, I think that. So this may be a little bit dark. This this dark back here, but it might not be. So hold off on hold off on doing anything with it. Uh, okay. Start adding some of those same. 
kind of Jesse, once you start adding some of those those darker, you know, cooler shadows into some of the yeah. areas. Uh, same with like there's a little bit here and maybe there's another little craggy bit that kind of comes down. You you've kind of got it hinted there, but you know, it comes down that like that was a little line I drew on it earlier. Yeah. Um, however, this this works, you know, is working, but but some of these these darker um, so same with with you know you've got some lines here and we need to turn them into shapes. Yeah. Um, so just uh, sticking up. I don't know what I've drawn there, but uh, once you start adding some of the cooler shades to this, now that you've got that really great vibrant reds and oranges and stuff, uh, I think you just need to come in with those cooler uh, purples and blues on top of this uh, a little. Okay. And you know, we haven't even really got into this bit over here on this side much more. Um, you know, we'll have a little bit more this week that we'll do on it, or next week that we'll do on it, uh, as well as some stuff down in here. Uh, but you could start adding some of these these little, let's see, this kind of comes. Yeah, right down. in there. Yeah, because there's no detail there at all. Yeah, um, so you could just start adding, and it doesn't even have to really follow what's in real life. Just kind of mm -hmm. come in and add some little, uh, you know, geometric, uh, shapes shapes that kind of look like broken sandstone uh-huh you know craggy bits some are horizontal some are vertical these are yeah. two that i'm drawing here because i can't draw with a mouse that's okay but uh, you kind of get the idea <clears throat> right start off with some of these warm colors but then add some of the cooler purples and and blues and stuff okay uh, and I think once you, you're, I, I mean, it's almost the same. Once we kind of change some of these lines to a little bit, like you can come in with, like some of these can still be warm kind of colors that we've been using. Just right. thicken, up, thicken up some of these areas so they're they're less line like and a little more shape like. Yeah. Um. And and those can still be warm. We'll we'll go in and add some cooler colors, but like. Over in here, I think just by adding some of those cooler colors, <clears throat> excuse me, on top of uh, on top of these, you know, like the the violet and uh, uh -huh. I think that'll really help out. Okay. Uh, let's see, even even you know, this like there's I'm trying to rem remember. That it seems like there's a, a bit of a a sharp edge on one of these that kind of does that. That's on the. Let me see. On this, on the one, the second one. This one. This one. Uh, this, this. Oops, you can't see. The one that you have the all the drawings. The, that one right there. Yeah. yeah. That's the one that has. Uh, oh some yeah, this one's a little. Well, this one will actually end up putting a little. You've got it kind of sketched in there. This eventually mm -hmm. will get. So don't worry about that line that I just drew. You have it there. Uh, so we'll make this a little bit darker because this will sharpen up this little shape that you've got there will sharpen up, but don't worry about that this week because I still have to go in and add it to mine too, so. Yeah. Um, I just figured yeah. it'll be more of a shadow in there. Uh, it is, it is, so we're, we're gonna go in and darken it. Uh, this little bit of a line does get a little bit sharper. Um, right now we've got just kind of those, we're, we're, we've got those kind of mid-tone bits that are sort of fuzzy and not yeah. sharp, but eventually we'll, we'll add I don't know why I had trouble saying fuzzy. Um, <laughs> um, we'll eventually kind of sharpen this edge up, uh, but that'll be later. So don't pay attention to in fact. Okay. We'll just get rid of it. Um, but I think once you add some of those cooler colors, even, you know, you can add a little bit over in here too. Some of those cooler purples and stuff. Yeah. That'll start helping. Um, but this is looking really nice. Uh, and again, I think we can. Uh -huh. We'll. You've got some nice textured your your tree shapes down here, so that's really cool. <clears throat> and we can do a little lifting to uh, <clears throat> add a few more lights back in. Like mine got pretty dark, and I, I want to go in and add a few lights to the to, to some of mine. Uh, so uh -huh. I'll try to do that. <clears throat> but uh, uh, hold off on making this any lighter. 
it may be a little dark, but once we get um, once we get some more darks on there, it may not be. So okay. it may be because this is so light. Yeah, it's, see, my picture in, in real life doesn't look as dark as that. That could be part of the okay. webcam as well. And part of my green, my greenery doesn't look as dark. Yeah, again, that could be the webcam yeah. uh, and the lighting at your house versus. Yeah. Plus, you also have to consider, I, I may not see the color exact because I have some eye issues. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's okay. Uh, have, you, have you ever heard of Milford Zorn? Uh, no. He, he passed away now uh, a few years ago, but my mom, I never got to take a workshop from him, but I did get to meet him. Uh, and he was a, a watercolorist, pretty well-known um, uh, uh, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to stop the ship. Okay, there we go. Uh, he was a pretty well-known watercolorist. Um, what I actually is really well-known. He's got several books out there. And he, he started out painting for the U.S. Army uh, during World War II. Um, so he would do uh, scenes of different play. He was sent all around. He was in the army, uh, and he was sent all around as an artist to do battle, you know, reporting scenes and, and just daily life scenes. And uh, as he was aging, he lived to. I think he. I think he lived. I know when my mom took his class, he was like ninety seven. Wow. And he was or ninety six or ninety seven. He had plans. He had already scheduled to teach classes on his 100th birthday. And I think he actually made it. Um, I don't know that he lived much further past 100, but really phenomenal, interesting guy. But his eyesight started going, um, you know, even at that point, he couldn't see. I, I knew he couldn't drive anymore. And, uh, you know, he had to have somebody kind of drive him around. And um, mm -hmm. uh, But anyway, his work just got more abstract. It was really interesting. Um, he started off a little, I mean, he was always kind of impressionistic, but as he sort of started losing his sight, his work just got more and more abstract, uh, and it was just, you know, really nice work. But uh, anyway, That's look him up sometime. He. Uh, uh, I will. How do you spell his last name? Z-O-R-N. Z-O-R-N. Okay, I got yeah, it. Milford Zorn. Zorn. Um, I don't think there's an E on the, I think it's just Z-O-R-N. Um, okay. Anyway, super, really nice guy and just did really cool stuff. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I, in his case, I think that uh, degenerative eye disorder that he had um, <laughs> worked to his benefit, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, uh, let's see, it's 10 after nine. Um, so I guess, uh, uh, I guess that's it for this week. Uh, you guys did a great job. I don't know what happened to Richard. Um, I'll have to call him and make sure everything's okay. Um, and, uh, uh, and you guys have a good week, and I'll, I'll see you next Tuesday. Uh, All right. I'll, uh, I'll uh, let's see. I am, yes, I am recording. Just had to double check. I don't Good, good. I'm a little good. late now, but... <laughs> Yeah, if you'll post that as soon as you can, it'll. Yeah, uh, I, I, I was trying to get them posted earlier, and then I I forget, and or something comes up, and so this one I'm going to try and get really early. So. All okay. good. So, alrighty. Good night. good night, guys. Have a have right. a good week.